this lecture we're going to discuss the type of electrodes uh, we have multiple different types of electrodes that we can create to figure out what the potential or e naught of that particular electrode is and that would give us an idea of how much uh, what's the tendency of that particular uh, reaction uh, for it to gain electrons or for it to lose electrons so we just discussed previously that a higher potential has a higher tendency to lose uh, to gain electrons whereas a lower potential has a higher tendency to lose electrons. So we're going to create all types of electrodes. Now, the first specific type of electrode is between a metal, which is uh, in solid state, and its metal ions, which would be in aqueous solution. So so you have, uh, and I'm going to pick the example of sodium again. So you have, you have a sodium electrode, a metal made out of sodium, which is dipped into a solution which contains sodium ions. Now that particular solution uh, could be NaCl or it could be any sodium related compound that is soluble and can make a solution that would give us sodium ions. So you have sodium electrode in a solution containing sodium ions and a reversible reaction would occur where, where the sodium ions would be gaining electrons and making sodium and at the same time sodium atoms would be losing electrons and producing sodium ions and we can connect a, we can connect a wire uh, with the ground which is at zero potential and we can figure out what the voltage on that electrode is which we uh, if you look in the data booklet it comes out to be the E naught for this particular electrode comes out to be minus 2.71 volts which be, which is very negative which means that sodium has a very high tendency to lose electrons so this is the first type of electrode it's between metal and metal ions the second type of electrode could be created between a gas, uh, a molecules that are in gaseous state and the aqueous ions. For example, I have this electrode over here and you need a gas jar. So, so I've, I'm, I'm uh, pushing Cl2 gas in this tube and the solution that I have, they contain aqueous uh, Cl-1 ions. So there's Cl-1 ions in the solution and you have a platinum electrode now a platinum electrode is used as a catalyst so you have a platinum electrode which is going to establish uh, the reversible reaction at a faster rate it's not going to disturb the reversible reaction because catalysts don't disturb reversible reaction but platinum would act as a catalyst it will, it will also act as an electrode so the two types of reactions that could occur at the boundary so for, for one could be that Cl2 molecules, gaseous molecules, would be gaining electrons and they would be f forming aqueous ions, uh, Cl minus one ions in solution. So, so that's one, but that's a reversible reaction. The reverse could also be true that Cl minus one ions would be losing electrons and they would be co getting converted back into Cl2. So a reversible reaction would eventually be established where Cl2 would be gaining electrons and forming Cl-1 in aqueous state where Cl-1 would be losing electrons and forming Cl2 back again. And at that particular point we can uh, connect this electrode, this platinum electrode with a voltmeter and ground next to it and we can measure the E naught of that particular uh, of this particular cell. And if you look in the data booklet the E naught for this particular cell is is 1.36 volts which is it's 1.36 volts which is a very high electrode potential which means that uh, chlorine probably has a very high tendency to gain electrons compared to other elements so it has a high tendency to gain electrons so this is what uh, this is a second type of electrode between a gas which requires a gas jar and its aqueous gaseous ions type of electrode is between aqueous ions and other aqueous ions so you have a, a reversible reaction set up between aqueous ions so for example your solution can contain Fe2 uh, plus and Fe3 plus ions at the same time so you can have you can mix two solutions one contain iron 2 plus ions and the other one containing iron 3 plus ions and eventually an equilibrium would be established between these two ions where Fe3 plus might be gaining electrons and uh, it would be forming Fe2 plus and and the place it's going to gain those electrons from is this platinum electrode over here uh, this platinum electrode is again acting as a catalyst it, and it, it's a, it's going to act as an electrode as well so so Fe3 plus might end up gaining electrons from this electrode and this electrode will become positive char positively charged in that particular case and it would form Fe2 plus or the reverse reaction could also occur where Fe2 plus would lose electrons 
and it would lose electrons and form Fe3 plus and it's going to lose all those electrons on this platinum electrode. So this in that particular case the platinum electrode would become negatively charged. Eventually an in equilibrium would be established where Fe3 plus would be gaining electrons and at the same time you would have Fe2 plus that would be losing electrons. So you would have um, a reversible reaction set up between two aqueous ions in this way and you can then measure the E0 of this particular electrode you can connect this wire to a voltmeter and there would be a ground connected at the other end which would be at zero potential and this voltmeter would give you a value and if you look at the data booklet the value for this electrode is the E0 comes out to be 0 0.77 volts so that's 0 0.77 volts and uh, this electrode is between aqueous ions. Another important thing that we, when we are constructing electrodes is that the term for the term standard electrode potential, uh, we always use the term standard and what standard means is that the electrodes, uh, all the reactions that are occurring at the electrodes, the temperature is room temperature, so it's 25 degrees centigrade. If there's any gas, the gas would have a pressure of one atmosphere pressure for gases and if it's a solution or you have any solution the concentration of that particular solution is going to be one mole per decimeter cube so so the electrodes that we discussed uh, for example this electrode over here you'll have Fe2 plus which is going to have a concentration of one mole per dm cube in this beaker so it's going to be one mole per decimeter cube similarly fe2 plus over here that would also have a concentration of one mole per decimeter cube so that would one mole per decimeter cube and if you use room temp uh, room temperature which is 25 degrees centigrade then the then the electrode potential would come out to be the standard electrode potential where uh, it would be called e naught where this naught represents standard conditions can apply the standard electrode terms to this gas and aqueous ions electrode this is this over here Cl2 is a gas so, so this should be at a pressure of one atmosphere pressure and you have Cl ions in the solution so Cl ions should have a concentration of one mole per decimeter cube so so as long as your conditions meet the standard conditions as long as you have uh, a temperature of 25 degrees centigrade and a pressure that is kept at one atmosphere and a solution concentration that is kept at one mole per decimeter cube then the electrode potentials obtained whatever electrode potentials are obtained they would be called the standard electrode potentials